Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm State Senator Brad Hoyleman, Chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee. I'd like to thank everyone here on Zoom joining us virtually and those watching, uh, as well as our witnesses for participating uh, in this discussion on good cause uh, and the importance surrounding it. On the panelists are uh, Mark H. Schneider, Esquire. He's the managing partner at Schneider uh, Buchol LLC. Uh, Alexander Lycarianis. Lyca uh, he's a member of Rosenberg and Estes PC. Uh, Jeffrey Mazel, Council and Executive Member uh, of the Co-op and Condo Council. Uh, he'll also be appearing with uh, Warren Schreiber and Bob Frederick, who are the co-presidents. We also have Matthew Lyman, who is an owner of Ideal Legal Support Services, LLC. And finally, Neil Sonnenfeld, Esquire. He's a senior partner at Gutman, Mintz, Baker, and Sonnenfeld, along with his colleague, Tamara Pelleman, Esquire. Uh, who is a partner at that firm as well. So Matthew Lyman uh, from Ideal Legal Support Services, LLC. Hi, Matthew. Hi there. Um, please work with me. I have a cold and I have a speech impediment, so please work with me. My name is Matthew Lyman. I am the owner of Ideal Legal Support Services, LLC. We are a 30 plus year business serving the needs of landlords throughout the capital district of New York State. We have over 1,300 landlord clients. I am also the host of the Landlord Advocates on YouTube. Our motto is helping landlords become better landlords. I come from a background that is not conducive to the life I have now. I was raised in an alcoholic home where later my parents divorced. In my teen years, my whole life was saturated with alcohol, drugs, parties, and crime. We were on welfare. I remember going clothes shopping at Salvation Army. I was thrown out because I did not agree with the, how my parent was allowing the aforementioned to happen. I was 17, I my own with a box of dirty clothes and $40 to my name living in the woods. I knew this was not going to be my future, and it is not. My life through hard work and determination has seen many successes, one being a landlord myself. Since 2019, there have been numerous laws enacted that have harmed landlords. The passage of the Statewide Housing Stability and Tenant Protection Act of 2019 is one of the most egregious actions of New York State government to harm both landlords and tenants. The fact that landlords may not peruse any records nor seek documents to check a potential tenant's past or current eviction status is very wrong. Many institutions across New York State examine records of all sorts to assist in decision making. We landlords are not allowed to do this. This is a grave injustice. Landlords must, be, must know all the names of the tenants that reside in the dwelling, even though those they have no knowledge of, no one gave permission to move in. When the eviction commences, when the enforcement officer or the sheriff's department or marshal or constable, those names not listed on the warrant cannot be evicted. Also, landlords may not accept last month's rent upon tenancy. For those tenants who are on the border and being granted tenancy, they will not based solely on this fact. This is ill treatment of tenants. I can go on about this act, however, on to good cause evictions. Good cause evictions is very detrimental to housing providers. It removes their ability to lawfully remove tenants from the property without first prevailing in a hearing where they must provide a justifiable reason or reasons in a court of jurisdiction. This is absolutely a diminishing of property rights. Property owners should not have to have a good cause to evict the tenant Ownership of said property should be enough. This bill also proposes that any rent increase over 3% will be considered excessive. May we consider the drastic rise in prices of our everyday commodities such as fuel, food, and clothing, and such to be very excessive as those prices have jumped much higher than 3%. The sharp increase of costs in those industries utilized by property owners and investors, how can landlords realistically be able to have a ceiling of 3% and still maintain expectable standards for the properties. Section 214 in this proposed legislation has certain conditions that must be met to evict the tenant. Non-payment of rent is self-explanatory. A violation of a substantial obligation of the tenancy? What is that? 
This is open to wide interpretation. Committing or permitting a nuisance? What is that? Again, wide open to interpretation. Permitting the premises to be used you for a illegal up, purpose. I, I'm trying. I told you I have a speech impediment. Landlords are lay people who cannot accuse a tenant on any document that the tenant or guest is committing an illegal act without a conviction. Can we say lawsuit? And the premises is needed by the landlord or an immediate family member. Landlords must also opt to renew the lease whether they wish to or not. These are all infringements on property rights proposed by certain members of the government. I have others, but I will leave it. In the justification of this bill, it states landlords often do not rent to tenants with past eviction records or with debt owed to previous landlords. And why should they? When a mortgage provider give a mortgage to someone who lost their previous home to foreclosure or has a bankruptcy on their credit report, would car dealers give a car loan to someone who had, with a bad payment history? The answer is no. Then why should housing providers have to? Finally, the last thing that landlords wish to do is evict a tenant. Our ability to do so should not be hampered by the numerous laws passed as 2019 and by good cause eviction. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, Thank you. Mr. Arnon uh, from Ideal Legal Support Services. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, panelists. Uh, that is the testimony. We're going to, we have a couple of senators who have questions. Uh, we'll start with um, Senator Salazar. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Um, begin by just quickly reiterating um, that the legislative intent of this bill is not to regulate housing co-ops at all. Um, and I don't think it violates the spirit of the bill at all to make that explicitly clear in the text of the bill. Thank you for, for your testimony regarding that. Um, also want to note that the bill's impact on owner's use, um, uh, that it explicitly says in the bill um, in section 212 that owner occupied premises with fewer than four units are completely exempt from the impact of the bill, regardless of other circumstances. I have a question for Mr. Lyman. Um, I noticed on your business's website that there's a question in your questionnaire, which is essentially an intake form for landlords, um, explicitly asking if the tenant they are seeking to evict is a section eight tenant or if the tenant receives social services. So I wanna ask Mr. Lyman, are you aware of existing law regarding source of income discrimination? I'm very well aware of that, Senator. Very, very well aware of that. That came out in April of 2019 under the lawful source of income. That question is asked because if the tenant is a Section 8 tenant, certain wording must be on the petition and notice of petition. And also a copy of that petition must be forwarded to the Section 8 office in that municipality. If those two things are not done procedurally, in your case, is dismissed. So that's the reason why we ask not to say, oh, you can't rent to them, only because it is necessary to have on the documents. I'm curious about some of the services that it says you provide on your website. Um, in, is, are you an attorney, Mr. Lyman? Not, we have attorneys on our, on our team. So I am not an attorney, but we have attorneys that do work on our team. We have three. So, so with these services um, that you provide, are they limited to uh, services such as, you know, representing a property owner in, in housing court? Um, what are some of the other services that that you provide? Uh, I, I myself facilitate the eviction with the attorneys. Our team process serves the documents upon the tenants, files everything back with the court, the attorneys represent in court. Other members of our team do property management and tenant leasing. When I say the team, they're not necessarily on our payroll. We are a team that works together to help landlords. And yes, we've also worked with, with tenants. You can call up the Legal Aid Society or at least in New York. You can call up the Schenectady Community Action Program in Schenectady, and they will actually tell you how we work with tenants. Stat actually called our office up yesterday and is asking us to assist them in removing one of the tenants that they are the sub lessor for. So we work with tenants a little. I clearly showed you the line to work poor in our welfare. So I've been on both sides of the railroad tracks. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, uh, Senator Brisport is next for a question. Senator Brisport. 
Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll see what we can. I have questions for Mr. Lekayanis, Mr. Lyman, Mr. Sonnefeld. We'll see if we get to all three of you in these three minutes. So uh, just be honest, Mr. Lyman, um, I'm not sure if you said this in your, your spoken testimony today, but in your written testimony, you have the you have a sentence, there should be no good reason, um, that the landlord needs no good reason. And I'm just curious, do you think it's acceptable or okay for a landlord to evict the tenant um, on, on the basis of their, their race, um, their, their citizenship, or their sexual identity? I, I will tell you forwardly that if a landlord puts a tenant into the property, clearly their race is quite evident. I don't know that the landlords don't want to evict tenants. That's the last thing that they want to do. That is not what I have seen in my 30 plus years where landlords, I've, done, I've facilitated thousands and thousands of evictions. Now, once have I seen a landlord come to me and say, I want to evict this person because they're a lesbian, because they're gay, because they're black, Guyanese. It has never happened. We have actually seen where tenants have accused the landlord of this, have gone to the New York State Human Rights Commission, come to our office very fearful, and, and the findings have been unjustified, they've been unfounded. Landlords are not out there to evict you because of who you sleep with what your skin color is. Sorry, Mr. Lamb, with the time I have left, I'm not asking if you've heard them say they're doing it because I'm asking if you think it's okay because in your written testimony, it says they don't, they shouldn't have a good reason or they shouldn't have this reason. Right. Senator, this I do not you. believe, and I appreciate, I do not believe that any landlord in 2022 is going to want to evict somebody based upon any personality traits that they may have. And they were going to do that, they would have never put them into the apartment to begin with. Thank you. I hope that answered your question, Senator. Thanks. Thanks, Senator Brisport. Uh, uh, Senator Salazar, back to you for a second round. Yeah, sure. Um, first of all, um, I think it's dubious to suggest that this bill would prevent landlords from increasing the rent by less than is even outlined as the rebuttable presumption threshold in the bill, because the bill simply doesn't say that. Um, I, what I want to ask the entire panel is, is it your opinion that a tenant who does not own real property, who does not have any equity in the property, uh, should be proportionally just as financially responsible for a property owner's costs as the owner of the property is. Senator, earlier this week, you had tweeted that you, landlords, cannot expect tenants to pay all of your bills for you. So sorry about that. I respect that. But Senator, all their bills. Yeah. Yeah. Senator, we are not asking that tenants pay our bills. We are asking that they either pay the agreed upon rent or vacate the property. Now, we're not asking them to pay the mortgage. If by chance the rents that they pay, pay the mortgage, this is the same, same principle when you go to a grocery store. So paying the agreed upon rent, a good, good cause actually says in the bill that non-payment of the agreed upon rent constitutes good cause to evict. I understand that. But when we are talking, when you ask the question, should we expect tenants to pay the, the, all of the bills on the property? In essence, that's what it's there for. When you go into a grocery store, every customer that buys everything that they buy is paying for that structure, the taxes, the upkeep, the employees that pay for everything. Well, that's what we expect tenants to do in the properties that they live in, to pay for all of the expenses related to that property via the rent. So I, I have an additional question, which is, do you believe that landlords desire to profit from the rental properties is more important than, say, the right to shelter or the ability of paying tenants to stay in their homes? So, I'm not going to say that landlords should try to profit. Like the one earlier who her rent was uh, raised 100 percent. That is ludicrous. That landlord is way out of line. It is very wrong to raise the rent 100 percent. But when you're talking, if you're a renter with $1,000 a month, you can't raise it more than $33. Expenses are going to go up. Well, excessive rent increases, absolutely, but 3% is not excessive. And, 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 and having adequate housing, absolutely. Tenants should have adequate housing regardless of their background, their race, the income that they make. They absolutely should have a nice place to live. I'm not going to deny that. Absolutely. Thanks all around. I thought we had a very, I think, civil and substantive discussion today. Uh, I really do want to thank my colleagues for 
the respect they showed to um, the uh, witnesses and to the witnesses for both respecting our process and the time clock. Um, I think we did clear up some misconceptions, I hope, on both sides. Uh, but I think there's more work to be done in terms of uh, additional um, analysis that uh, that was raised, uh, which uh, always deserves uh, further uh, examination. Um, the legislation is currently in uh, the Judiciary Committee. I think this is an important step uh, to determine uh, the the, the, the bill, uh, the, the, the future of the bill in that committee. I look forward to working with Senator Salazar and Senator Kavanaugh and all of our colleagues on both sides of the aisle um, to determine next steps uh, as well as advocates. So thank you everyone. Uh, thank you to our teams uh, collectively for, for organizing this event. And of course the advocates and everybody watching. Uh, Senator Kavanaugh, I'll sign off by saying have a good weekend. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.